This short video will show you how to run the SARS-CoV-2 Neutralization Antibody Detection Kit, or CPAF. At the end of this video, you should be able to Describe CPAF and how it works Describe the safe use of CPAF Describe the proper storage of CPAF kits Describe the reagents and equipment needed Describe how to run the CPAF test and interpret the results. This video is not meant to replace the instruction manual that comes with every kit. Please consult the manual when in doubt. The content of this video is mainly based on this manual. CPAS is developed to look for antibodies that target a part of the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2, the receptor binding domain, RBD. SARS-CoV-2 is the virus that causes COVID-19. These antibodies, termed as neutralizing antibodies, stop SARS-CoV-2 from infecting the cell. Not all antibodies that target SARS-CoV-2 can stop an infection. Other antibody or serology tests typically detect antibodies that are able to bind SARS-CoV-2 proteins. These kits, however, only tell us that antibodies are present, but they do not tell us if they can stop a virus infection. In real life, the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2 interacts with the human ACE2 receptor. This interaction allows the virus to enter the cell and cause infection. CPAS works by copying the players of the SARS-CoV-2 infection without the use of the virus and human cells. In CPAS, human ACE2 protein is coded on the capture plate. We then add the RBD tagged with an enzyme horseradish peroxidase, HRP. Now this HRP RBD protein causes a visible chemical reaction when the enzyme substrate TMB is added. If there are no neutralizing antibodies, the RBD will bind to the ACE2 on the plate. We see this when a solution changes to a bright blue color. This is a negative test result. On the other hand, if there are neutralizing antibodies, the RBD will not bind to ACE2. The HRP RBD protein will then be washed away and we will not see a color change. This is a positive test result. The CPAS kit comes in a form of a box that should be kept between 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Only take the box out of the refrigerator when you are ready to use it. Make sure that the box is properly sealed and it has no external damages. Check the expiry date of the box. Make sure it has not yet expired. Inside the box, you will find the following items. A user manual. Two pieces of plate sealer. A capture plate. A positive control tube. A negative control tube. The HRP conjugated RBD. Sample dilution buffer. Dilution buffer for the HRP. 20 times concentrated wash solution. The TMB solution which should be protected from light, and stop solution. In addition to what was provided in the kit, you'll need to have the following laboratory equipment to run CPAS. Microplate reader that has a 450 nanometers filter. Distilled or deionized water. Graduated cylinder. A container to store the wash solution tubes to aliquot or dilute samples, 10 microliters, 200 microliters, and 1 milliliter pipettes and tips, 200 microliters multi-channel pipettes, reagent reservoir, paper towels, laboratory timer, refrigerator to store samples and kits, desktop centrifuge, 37 degrees Celsius incubator. Having a microplate washer can be helpful and is recommended. Hi, baby, Bye. Running C 
pass is like running other serological tests like ELISA. The whole process involves three main steps. First, preparation. This includes planning of your experiment and making the stock solutions. Second, running the experiment. And third, analyzing the data. Before you start any experiment, you need to know how many wells or reactions you will be running. Each kit can accommodate 92 reactions at most. The remaining four wells will be used as follows. Two for positive control and two for negative control. These are required for each experiment. We recommend spinning down the positive, negative, and sample tubes at the start of the experiment. In this video tutorial, we assume that you will run 92 samples. You can reduce the volumes proportionally when running fewer samples. First, we prepare the one-time concentrated wash buffer. Dilute the whole bottle of 20 times concentrated wash buffer to a total of 800 milliliters with deionized or distilled water. Store the one-time concentrated wash buffer at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius when not in use. Next, we prepare the samples. When dealing with patient serum samples, you must follow all the safety instructions of your institution. In addition, heat inactivation is recommended to enhance the performance of the assay. Heat inactivation can be performed by heating samples to 56 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. Prepare 10 fold dilution of samples. Mix 9 volumes of the sample dilution buffer to 1 volume of the sample. Positive and negative controls are also needed for each run. Both are included in the CPAS kit. They should be diluted and prepared like the samples. In separate tubes, mix the positive negative controls and the samples with the HRP conjugated RBD. We recommend using 60 microliters of the samples mixed with 60 microliters of the HRP conjugated RBD. You can also do this on a clean 96 well plate as shown in this video. The use of disposable filter tips as shown in this video is optional. Used tips should then be discarded into freshly prepared 10% bleach solution. Incubate the mixture at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. While waiting, you can prepare the capture plate for use. Wells from the capture plate can be dismantled as shown. Carefully press the back of the well. The column of wells will snap out of the capture plate. You can also remove part of the column by twisting along its axis. This is useful if you do not wish to use all 96 wells for one experiment or run. Place the detached wells back into the foil pouch for later use. After the 30 minute incubation, remove your samples from the incubator. Resuspend the HRP conjugated RBD with samples thoroughly. We recommend resuspension by pipetting up and down multiple times. Pipette 100 microliters of the resuspended mix into the capture plate you have prepared earlier. After transferring 100 microliters of the mix into the capture plate, seal the plate with a plate sealer. Make sure that you have a tight seal. Incubate the capture plate at 37 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. After the 15 minute incubation, remove the capture plate from the incubator. Invert to remove the sample mix from the plate. Wash each well with 260 microliters of the one time concentrated wash buffer. To remove the wash buffer, tip the plates over a sink. Tap the plates on a stack of paper towels to dry. You may also use a microplate washer or multi-channel pipette to remove the wash buffer. Wash the plates 
three more times. After the fourth and last wash, tap the plates dry before proceeding to the next step. It is best to do the next steps in a darkened room as light may interfere with the results. Add 100 microliters of the TMB solution to each well. Incubate the reaction for 15 minutes in the dark at room temperature, which is around 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. The timing is critical. We recommend starting the timer once you have added the TMB to the first column of wells. If you exceed 15 minutes, you may end up saturating the reaction while this reaction needs more time. After 50 minutes of incubation at room temperature, you can stop the reaction by adding 50 microliters of the stop solution. You will see a change in color from blue to yellow. Read the absorbance in a microplate reader at 450 nanometers immediately. Export the data for analysis. Raw 450 nanometers absorbance data should be normalized to the negative control. We recommend taking the mean of the two negative control wells. The main measure of CPAS is percent inhibition. You can calculate the percent inhibition by dividing the sample's absorbance reading to the mean of the negative controls. Next, subtract this quotient from 1. Multiply this difference by 100%. This is the percent inhibition. A large percent inhibition value indicates a large quantity of neutralizing antibodies. The cutoff of a positive test is 20% inhibition. Any value higher than 20% is considered a positive test. A positive test means that there are neutralizing antibodies present against SARS-CoV-2. This concludes the instructional video for CPAS, or the SARS-CoV-2 Neutralization Antibody Detection Kit. We encourage all users to read the instruction manual before use. Should you have further queries, please consult with the manufacturer. Their contact information can be found in the instruction manual. Thank you for your attention.